Welcome back to Watching Baseball here at John Boy Media. We are running through game 163s on Monday, two days ago. The last video, we did the 1978 tie-breaking game between the Yankees and the Red Sox. I was familiar enough with that one growing up a Yankees fan watching Yes Network. Moving on to the next game, 163 took place two years later in 1980 between the Houston Astros and Los Angeles Dodgers. I know nothing about this game. I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to find out what happened a little bit. We have some innings we've picked out. A note right away. This is watching baseball. We watch, we learn, we react. We are not coming with any knowledge. We are the, the point of the show is not to give you knowledge. It's for us to react. Jake, did you know about this game? I did not, and again, our quick Google search to not sound like total dingbats shows that actually the three-game set before this is kind of the storyline because the uh, the Dodgers were down three games to Houston. They welcomed them to town with Nolan Ryan, um, and there's two other pitchers that had, I think, better ERAs than Nolan at the time, Vern Rule and Ken Forsh, your Ken guys. Ken Forsh, yeah. Um, and yeah, the Dodgers kind of had an awesome three game set to get them to this 163, which, um, at the same time, kind of a shout out to this Houston team, not as too much of a spoiler, but they, they win this game, a dominant Joe Necro performance. We need another Necro back in major league baseball. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and a lot of fun names. I think this is during Fernando Mania. I saw his eighth start is in here. We've got a young Joe Morgan uh, on the on the Astros. Or, excuse me, an old Joe Morgan. Yeah, he I was going to say old. Yeah. He started in Houston. He went to Cincinnati. He came back for this 1980 season. Um, so, and, yeah. Um, just to go back to what you said in case, in case anyone didn't realize – the Dodgers in their last three games of the season had to go to Houston and sweep them for a chance at a tiebreaker. So if you're a Houston fan, like, we just got to win one game, who gives a shit? And the Dodgers win all three. So that's in crazy. LA. It's in L.A. But oh, yeah. It was in L.A.? Whatever. So that's the same thing, though. They got to sweep them to force the playoff. So if you're a Dodgers fan right now, you're like, hey, we just fucking did it. We got all the momentum in the world. And uh, as you see, that momentum gets squandered pretty quickly. We're going to go straight to game one or or the first inning because that's kind of where some action is. And this is brought to you by the shop at johnboymedia.com. Shop.johnboymedia.com. You can get yourself some hats, some shirts, some mugs, whatever you'd like to support us. We actually just put out some new um, sequin shirts. Zach, put the sequin shirt right here. And now I'm going to go like this. And now it's a new color. Same shirt. Different color. color. <laughs> Different new color. And uh, do the uh, the Minnesota Twins retro sequin shirts because I think those are awesome. I'm going to buy myself one. Anyway, so let's get into it. The Dodgers won the season series 10 games to 8. And in the last six meetings between these two teams in Los Angeles, the Dodgers won all six, including three this weekend. Wow. Before the leagues split into divisions, there were four playoffs. It's Look like Al graphic, Michaels. It's interesting to note the mm-hmm. Dodgers were involved in all of them, losing to the Cardinals in 1946. Then, of course, the Bobby Thompson home run in the 51 playoff as the Dodgers First lost sudden to death in NL Milwaukee history. In in 59 and lost in three to San Francisco in 1962. And this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet. Shout out. And your Chevy dealer wow. with Chevrolet. Monza citation in the new Monte Carlo. Chevy's up ahead. Okay. Who had okay. violated back to Dodger Stadium. There he is. Michaels. Mm. And when you think about it, you go back to the 1st of March. The Astros start spring training in Cocoa, Florida. The Dodgers start in Vero Beach, Florida. Oh, I don't the want the whole back story. Pretty cool that he, they let him broadcast the game in center field. <laughs> Bob Euchre. He's got Bob. Today. Today. Just a parade montage? I'm for yeah. it. I'm into it. Some NL parades. Oh, we get the Yanks too? Sure. Who won in 79? Pirates? Uh, the Bears. Pirates. Baseball fever. Catch it. It's 
It's sweeping the country. Weather-wise, it is a day much like yesterday. Temperatures in the 70s. It's quite smoggy in Los Angeles. Ooh, the smog, right Jake. Below. Shots fired. And the crowd settling in as the Dodgers will be taking the field. Okay. I Ooh. wanted that little buildup, but I don't want all of this. How about Tony Tennille? Sounded great from the snippets I heard. From Captain and Tennille, Jim. How come this is in L.A.? They won the season series um, they 10 They won all the games, yeah. So, I mean, if you're a Dodgers fan, you, you've won six out of six in this stadium against this team. You just won three in a row. You got the home field advantage. Everything's going to go smoothly, and you just go into the playoffs. Yeah, and uh, on, on the other side of it, it is the, I think, Houston, you have the, like, damn, we fucked up. But also, I mean, we're one baseball game away from none of that mattering. I wonder if they saved Necro for this potential game. But, I mean, they had Nolan Ryan and all those other guys, too. So Yeah. Look at the numbers they offer you. It means nothing to me. All right, throw this one down, Joe. He's lost his last three decisions, had one no decision over his last four starts. But as you alluded and the Dodgers were in three elimination games in a row, so I'm sure they're throwing their best pitchers then. Sutton was on the mound, Fernando. Yeah. Art Howe, former manager. like those Astros uniforms. Goltz's second start against Houston, a seven to four. Really loss. good for the time so period. One game for the title. Terry Poole to lead things off the pitch and a strike. Oh and one. It's a strike, Jake, but Joe didn't even catch it. It's moving. Balls sinker balls dancing today. Bad sign of things. Low. One and one. Hal, I think a pretty good tribute to Doug Harvey. Normally I know cameras are different and frame rates and all that stuff, but that just but looks like such a shitty pitch. There you go. That's the game. That's when, yeah. They were too, they were too hot. Catcher can't catch the ball. Second baseman can't feel the play. Yeah, Although see, I'm over the catcher. I think that's the catcher hyping up the pitcher. Like, dude, your stuff is moving today. Yeah. I can barely squeeze it. When your second baseman move by boots him. it, first play of the game, I mean, there goes the crowd. I mean, that guy's wearing one of those fake glasses and nose things. And by that guy, I mean the player that you're going to get upset I didn't call him by his name. I think it's Davey Lopes. Uh, yeah, yeah Davey Lopes. They just said it. Yeah. Enos Cabell. Enos Cabell. Had a terrible day yesterday <laughs> as Gold drives pool back. <laughs> Cabell Been there. struck out three times and made the error on Garvey as Gold means business this time, but Poole gets back. He made the Need to keep him at bay, Jake. Oh, Jack. I mean, we're in prime hit and run era. Yeah. Yeah. Two pickoffs and a pitch out. Dodgers playing scared from the jump. That error shook him. First pitch, pitch out. They love to run. Galt. They had six players with 20 or more steals this season, including this Poole guy. He looks so un uninterested in pitching in this game right now. The thinking is, as far as catcher Joe Ferguson Not good energy. Concerned, pitching out with Poole on, looking for something moving right away. Galt's backing off the rubber. Jeez. There goes Poole, and the 1 0 pitch is fouled away. Hit and run on. <laughs> Of course, automatic. 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 From goals that time on Cabell, they have Hatcher well, he slow runs like a robot. Cabell, and as I said at the top of the telecast, goals will basically try to stay in tight on right-handed batters. He'll pitch on your fists mostly throughout the course of a ball game. He's got a good slider and a curveball too. But as I said, if he has to get you out, he gets in a tough situation. He'll go to a good sinking fastball. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it needs ball, to be said, to but out. this is Al Michaels and Bob Euchre Again, calling a game 40 years ago. Yeah. 
the National League I like I like what they're bringing to the table so far. But we like we like them throughout. That's our life plus another third of our life. You've lost the game. Yeah. If you can't pitch without worrying about this dude, you've lost if the If the first base runner was going to ruin your day this much. Another pitch out? Oh, this is ugly, man. This is tough. The this kids is aren't going to like this one. What's that? The kids aren't going to like this one. This is, this. I mean, this is as mentally beat as I've seen a team that was went in with so much gusto. Like, scared of, holy smokes. Doesn't want to throw home. I mean, scared of giving up one run. I mean, we've hit a dangerous territory. If they do another, I mean, they can't do another pick up, pitch out because they did two already. Oh, they could. I'm not if doubting they, them at this point. If they do another pickoff, I don't know. I won't be surprised. Euchre definitely turned to Michaels in mouth like, what the? Yeah. The, game's, the game was lost after the fourth pickoff. I mean, if his body language was bad with a man on and no out, what's this pitcher's body language going to be now? I think he's calling. He's calling for the reliever. They're saying get Rick Sutcliffe loose. Man. Dave Galtz. Dodgers used six pitchers in this game. Well, this guy wasn't long for it, that's for sure. He had the longest performance of that day. He does, Jim, I got bad news for you. He does this for three innings. Oh, shit. Like, go get the batters, dude. It's the first inning. Enos can run, Jim. First inning. Bob, you've told us about the sinking fastball so much. I understand you got to fill a lot of air because he's just throwing pickoff after pickoff. Because they're not playing baseball currently. Bob, uh, if next time Euchre talks, I, I hope he says his number one pitch is a pickoff. That's a good joke. Do it, Bob. See, I say you keep hammering the sinker. Top of the first, and the Dodger bullpen getting busy already as Morgan checks his swing, but the pitch in there anyway for a strike. Two and one, and Harvey says he did come around. He made the call. Well, they call the check swing there. Yeah. In the Dodger bullpen, Rick Sutcliffe up and throwing. Yeah. Get someone up. Morgan fouls it back, and the count is two and two. And I think Sutcliffe's an interesting Georgia asterisk bullpen. in this because I think he was like good the year before, but Aaron terrible this year. Starter last year had a great rookie year, but this year, a whole other story. As there you, you can go. See by the numbers. And throwing back of Goltz in the first. Goltz, by the way, had to come out of his last start at Candlestick Park in San Francisco on Thursday. Yeah, Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe won the Rookie of the Year the year before, and then this year he had a 5.56 ERA. Jim, he's crafty. He'll get an out any way he has to. Pickoffs, step offs. I hate to be harsh, but he's a scared old man right now. For being harsh. He's got nothing, man. I know his he's, stuff doesn't even look. He strained his calf three days before. He right no. He he knew he was in a bad spot to start. Yeah. 
I mean, he told himself, like his his don't pump up speech was, don't let the first runner on. You get through that first runner and you got it in cruise control. That's what he was looking at himself. And then that first runner gets on and he's just like, it just turns into the Key and Peel like sweat pouring, so scared. Like I didn't plan for that. I only planned for, I wasn't supposed to let him on. was the only thing that I didn't plan for. Yeah. Do you, hey, do you honestly think he's throwing more pickoffs than pitches at this point? Yes. Yeah, right? Easily. Again, Cabell goes. Morgan strikes out to throw down a second, and they do not get him. Hold up. Thomas fishes the tag on what looked like a double play and a big break for the Astros instead of two out man and third. Hold up. I look like he was out. Looked like he was out. And that's something this pitcher doesn't need right now. No. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. He's barely running. Oh. That was better. Might have been safe. Dude, run. Guess there's a hit and run. I don't know. I'd love to see like an HD actual camera. It looks very close. Thomas is shaken up, and so is Cabell. So yeah, that left arm's close. Up. I wonder if he was kind of cruising need, of course, to get the run home. Or a hit and run, because he did swing and miss in the pitch, right? The yeah. The, the, high throw. the ball beat him by a good amount. Very close. Could have been in. Either way, this pitcher doesn't need that right now. No. I mean, he just struck out Joe Morgan. <laughs> like, like, few, like Hall of Famer Joe Morgan. Lock in, kid. Joe Morgan was trying to hes get too crafty with his hit and run. That's all. That's 36-year-old Joe Morgan. So the runners are at second and third. And Jose Cruz, the batter. By the way, as you look at the numbers, today's game... Jose Cruz looks like a, a big dude. He's a ball player. His, uh, I think his son came up and played with the Astros, too. Jose Cruz, Jr. So that's why Joe Necro, if he picks up the win today, would be a 20-game winner, have the benefit of the extra game. So where are the runners now, second and third? Second and third. Nobody scored. Back except at third. One out. He can get out of it, but he's defeated. I mean, if they called that runner out at second, you're an out away. From yeah, that was that would have been huge. It would have been huge for his his mentality. I love this um strike call. Hard for me not to like your strike call, but just a. Right across. Yeah. Show them shoulders. It's like when someone asks you what direction something is and you have a mouthful of food, but you're very confident in your answer. So. Over there. Bouncing ball to Hatcher. The runner coming home. The throw to Ferguson. They do not get the ball. The Dodgers are a mess. I mean, if he squeezes that, he's out, right? Well, yeah, but Jake, we saw this from the first pitch of the game. Glove one broken in. He's not catching things today. I think they said that they've been going with him at catcher recently before. I think Al Michaels said that. So we've... Yesterday, jumping out on top. Here it is again. The ball hit to third. Here's Hatcher now. And plenty of time. And Ferguson, plenty of time for the tag. The hard slide by Poole. And you'll see the ball pop away from... That... Is as unacceptable as it comes. What even happened? So yeah, Jim. I mean, our our guy Steve Yeager was a catcher on this Dodgers team, but he was having a terrible year. Dude, did you see that pickoff immediately? Oh, I think that the runner like ripped it out of his hands in the middle of that slide. <laughs> Legal back then. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Enos Cabell crosses the plate to make it two nothing. So two Dodger errors in the inning. And what a nightmare game. inning! A nightmare, and hey, we you've been pretty tough on our pitcher. 
I mean, he he's on out number four, out number five. The only thing that he's done poorly, Jake, is completely bore his fielders to death by throwing more pickoffs than pitches. Hey, second baseman kicks the first ball. That should have been a ground out. I mean, we had the close play at second. We had the throw home that should have been an out. He struck out Joe Morgan. This is, yeah. uh, you were being tough on our guy. I think he's pointing the finger and he's right. No, I think everyone can point the finger at everyone. I mean, like, his pace, pitcher sets the pace and the, and the feel of the inning, and he just brought it to a screeching, like, this sucks feel all around. You, told, you said it. The energy was bad. The play was bad. Everything's been bad. Make that play, Davey Lopes. Play should have been made. That was a hell of a stop, though. That's a great snag. Art Howe flying down the line. Could he have done the old uh, fake aru, fake throw to first, and then tag the runner who takes the lead? No, nope. runners. No, nah, he slid into third. Good base running. May have been a blessing in disguise, Al, as this game goes on with Sane not in the lineup today, nursing a hamstring and a bad. This is a huge at bat. In there, that ball may have gotten by Say, leading to another Houston run. And then again, like I say, though, you go nah, not really, because they were already down enough damage. Second, it's it's, a, it's an emotional out. roller coaster. Ashby Alan Ashby's a great name, though. Great name. I feel like that's a character from Californication or something like that. Some show I watched. Alan Ashby at the top of the telecast handling Joe Necro. A guy who is so very tough in the situations where you have runners at first. Go to first base by Goltz in a bit late. Still picking people off with bases loaded? What's the point of that? I know the kind of pressure it is. You gotta stay with the bread and butter pitch and it's the knuckleball for Necro. Getting it out. Doing anything to get it out. Hit in the air to shallow left field. Dusty Baker shades down. Has it for the out. Lou Ashby. Lou Ashby. All right, so the funny thing is Necro comes out and gets a 1-2-3 inning, and uh, our guy Goltz has to come right back out. But we're going to skip forward. I actually, we want to see a little bit of Necro who throws a complete game, zero earned runs. Might be hard to find here, Jake. Might have to just cut it. I want to go to the seventh inning. Because he seems to just dominate those batters. In New York in 73. Now it is bad. It's, there's no playing on the baseball game itself. Very cool. He's throwing it. I don't know where this is. I don't know who's up, but. Tough to not like Joe Necro's look. Yeah. Fouled away in the count two and two. How old is Joe Necro here? Put all the security people out there you want. 1980, Joe Necro is 35 years old. Okay. Second in the Cy Young the season before, fourth in the Cy Young this year. It sounds like something's happening in the crowd. There's been riots, there's been throwing something going on. Knuckler in there, strike three. So Ferguson becomes the third strikeout victim. That butterfly dance. So that was Ferguson who he struck out. So what the hell inning is this? What the hell's going on out there? This is the fourth inning? <laughs> no way, it can't be. We're like... We're almost over the game, unless the, this isn't the full game on YouTube where the last couple innings are like two minutes long each. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? I don't know. It's tough, tough to say. I'm going to skip I mean, ahead. yeah, I guess it, it could, right? Because, I mean, Houston puts up. All seven runs in the first four innings. 
Um, and we saw how slow our guy was working. So, yeah, maybe it does make sense. So that's the middle of the eighth inning. Okay, that's what I want to see. I want to see... I want to see bottom eight. Because it, it seems like Necro is just mowing them down at this point. And the Dodgers don't care. We'll see. The crowd, by their response... The score at this point is 7-1... to one. Dodgers. I mean, they just pounced right away. They made the Astros. Or no, no, no. The Astros made the Dodgers depressed. Dusty Baker with, looks like, two hats. The helmet looks looks like one of those ice cream helmets you eat out. It's so small on his head. They got the beach balls going. Crowd believes. Prior to the start of the game, I think there's like Dodger riots going on in the crowd or something. From the scene here, thought they had won it. How many pitches did Nico throw? Well, here we go, the bottom Don't of the matter. Nico takes the Baker. Throw all day. It's a nice fastball. I mean, how many different pitches? Can't tell you. Dodgers mm. with five hits today, all singles. Is that just a fastball? Is that a knuckleball? I think it's knuckleball. It looks like a speedy one. A ball, one and one. Al, you know, going back to the theory about Necro, starting hitters off with a fastball or a slider, seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Dodgers down seven to one, have to take a pitch. More often than not, he's laying them right in there, getting ahead, and then coming with the knuckleball. Ooh. And down goes Dusty. It was one, two, right three. Two. That looked like Necro hurt second, himself on that. He was shaking his hand years. afterwards. So that's six now for Necro. I think that's uh, He's retired that's five like flexing on him. Like ooh, those those knuckle those knuckleball nails, man. Steve Garvey popped up, struck out, flied out. So Necro's sat down five in a row at this point. He struck out six, and the shadows have come to play. Cabell coming out of the game. How can't handle this one, but Reynolds does. Nice short. It's a nice play. So two down. Craig Reynolds. A couple of camera angles, day. too. Astro shortstop. Three He's got a flap three. off his. A good play by Reynolds. That huh? high hopper hit over. Glasses flap. Reynolds, way back in the hole. That's a nice little and scoop. Guns a throw to get That's a nice play. First for the second out. Well, I just got through Still not a good hit. hit. The Dodgers trailing no. seven to one, maybe taking a pitch from Necro. Garvey hit the first one, a fastball. Rick Monday. Rick Monday, one for two, plus a walk. So the Astros, four outs. So Look at that. I love the way Nico's just chomping and looking. Ooh, Monday. Two down, bases empty, bottom of the eighth. Yeah, that full, the full lean over the by Astros, the pitcher. That's a strong two move. First, two in the yeah. Third as you're looking for a it's like contest. what you do when you're playing against your kids. And you're it's not to an intimidation. intimidation. It looks like exhaust. In the fourth inning. And it, was Monday it looks like boredom to me. Like center. forearms on the knees. Necro strike one offering. Low and inside. One Maybe that's one. how he saved himself. I don't know. I like it either way. Oh, you see the guy in the dugout, like, holding a knuckleball? Yeah. Oh, so that's how. One, one pitch. He's fouled away, and the count is one and two. If Houston goes on to meet Philadelphia, in the 12 games between those two teams this season, the Phillies won nine. Of course, the Phillies, veterans of the playoffs, so they haven't won. They were there in 76, 77, and 78. Houston, of course, has never been there. It is interesting. It's not intimidating. No. Popped up. Ashby coming back. And with room. And it's three up and three down. And Necro Easy peasy score. lemon squeezy, Jake. Set down eight Let's watch the last out. The last Dodger hit was a single by... Never letting it get out of hand. So if you guys are curious, because we we saw the first two runs in the fourth inning, the 
the Astros put up two more with uh, when Rick uh, Sutcliffe was on the mound. Or, or they put up two more against Dave Goltz. Art Howe hit a home run. And then, uh, and then they put two up against... It looks like Rick Sutcliffe came in and just walked people. And then, then Joe Beckwith came in and gave up the hits that led the runs. Pitch. A bouncing ball to the right side. Bergman has it, steps on first, and the Astros have won the National League West. Bill Burton finally okay, after okay. Four days, a smile creasing his face. And the celebration, ironically enough, on the road in the Dodger Stadium infield. As the Houston I, at first, I was thinking kind of they were going to come in lackluster celebration because they kind of controlled the game the whole time. But, hey, those last... Four days must have been daunting as all hell. Stressful as shit. Like, they could have done it a lot. They had three chances to do this. Waited till their backs were against the wall. So much hair, man. Of the game for the Astros, Powell, and of course, Joe Nico. It's crazy how fluffy and much hair there is. Any interviews? Do we care? So oh, yeah, yeah, well, it's a Bob Euchre interview. We'll do some mm. So I, I do kind of like have interest. Being swarmed on as they come through the tunnel area here. We're trying to get Joe Nico, of course, who did such an outstanding job today. And Art Howe, the unassuming guy with the four big RBIs today. Bedlam here, as you can well understand, in the Houston clubhouse, as Al told you, 19 years. It's been a long time since way back in 1962 and the first for the Houston Astros. As we've told you throughout this series, a tough, tough battle, and they have finally hung on the winner. Mel Wright, come on up here. Let me get Mel Wright up here. I'll get Mel Wright up here to start things out. Mel, no... Uh, no talking about the big win today, a big victory, but an outstanding performance by Joe Necro. Yes, I, he did an outstanding job. He, he was keyed up, but we kept him un keyed down just enough that he did a heck of a job. Mel, I want to ask you, Joe talked about this earlier before the game today, that later in the ball game he goes to a fastball and slider to start hitters off and then comes back with a knuckleball, and evidently that's been working well for him. Well, I, Joe has a tendency sometime to overthrow his, his pitches, his fastball and stuff, and once he wears the edge off and gets a little bit... Well, I say keyed down and a little bit tired, and he can throw all of it pretty well, and that's what he's been trying to do. Now you've been around here a long time. I know you're very, very satisfied. <laughs> oh, I'm as happy as I can be. This is what we fought for. All right, we'll try to get Joe Necro. <laughs> I like keyed, it. A little keyed. He's too keyed up. Got to get him keyed down. Keyed up. Got to get keyed down. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it adds up. It all makes sense. Sorry about it, Dodgers, but... Yeah, he had a terrible first inning, and it was bad. Game 163, can't have that first inning. Can't do it. Can't do it. So uh, what, 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 what happens here? They, I think we have it. The Astros go on to lose to the Phillies in the NLCS, but they take them to uh, five games, three to two. Was Brutal, that? man. Dude, this Houston team. Dude, are you looking at this NLCS? For the Houston versus Phillies? Philly won game one, three to one. Sure. 10 inning game, Houston wins. 11 inning game, Houston wins one nothing. 10 inning game, Philly wins five to three. Game five, Philly wins eight to seven in 10. That's a hell of a series. That's a not so series. Get me in there. Yeah, maybe the after we do. After we do 163s, maybe we'll just choose, like, DSs, CSs, and watch, like, like we could watch the extra innings of every one of those games. The final four games of a five-game set all went extras. <laughs> and game one was kind of a late comeback by the Phillies, a sixth and seventh inning runs. How about that? That's crazy. Did the Phillies go on to, to win that year? I forget. Baseball. Uh, the Phillies look like they won the World Series over the Kansas City Royals, so yes. Michael Jack Schmidt. 
Good job. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back in a couple days with the next game, 163.